Uh, NOAA uh, and NASA uh, both operate uh, a number of satellites in space that are critically important to providing information that allows us to forecast the weather, but also understand climate change, uh, rescue people, uh, measure changes in oceans. Uh, there are, you know, the, the satellites that we have are typically very large, very, very expensive, billions of dollars expensive. Uh, and they uh, typically have multiple instruments on them that are either uh, imaging the earth, uh, either the land uh, or the water or both, uh, or um, the atmosphere, critically important, but also uh, space to detect, uh, to measure solar flares, for example, or to see uh, if there are, uh, to, to measure solar wind, for example. But those measurements are, are not just the visible wavelengths that Planet Labs is really working, you know, taking pictures that you can see and get incredible information from, but measuring uh, things that you can't see in the atmosphere, measuring ozone, measuring the chemistry of the atmosphere, measuring rain, uh, measuring uh, ocean color, measuring uh, sea surface heights. How high is the ocean? How, you know, how, where is it uh, higher than other places? So we can have very fine, very, very precise measurements of sea level rise. How deep is the ocean? You can do bathymetry, you can measure the bottom of the ocean from space. So there are tons of things that these satellites do that are critically important, um, that are not just visible uh, wavelength information, mm -hmm. but other wavelengths, radiation, calculating the Earth's radiation budget, the solar radiation, those are all things that you can do from space. And uh, I think one thing that people may not be totally aware of is, you know, if you are hiking or sailing and you have a disaster and you activate an emergency transponder beaker, beacon, that signal goes up to one of our satellites and that is radioed back to Earth, and there are people that sit in a NOAA office that are tracking uh, these uh, help signals and directing, you know, calling up, uh, finding out who is the closest emergency responder to go out and rescue somebody. So, you know, that's yet another service uh, that some of these great big huge satellites are performing. And you've all seen, I'm sure, some great tracks of uh, critters that have radio, I mean, that have uh, t special satellite tags on them, uh, whether it's uh, great white sharks uh, or turtles or whatever, that information is also relayed to satellites. So the whole constellation of satellites that NOAA has, either those that orbit uh, around the Earth and the Earth is spinning underneath them, uh, or ones that sit up uh, at a constant place over the Earth and move with the Earth, uh, those, all of those satellites uh, give us an incredible amount of information, but they're very, very expensive. And I, ha I have to tell you the one story uh, that I think it, that really brings this home. So many people, I think, are unaware of how important satellites are to our ability to forecast weather. And um, I can tell you that 90% of the data that go into our weather models come from satellites. So they're really, really important. When I was at NOAA, we had uh, a, a problem with one of our satellite systems. We had to fix that problem, and then I had to go up to Capitol Hill and describe to them uh, what we had done and why it was so important for Congress to fund this program. And this one member of Congress looked at me and he said, Doctor, I don't need your weather satellites. I have the Weather Channel. <laughs> and I thought, oops. I better explain to him where the Weather Channel gets its information, as well as all of the other weather providers.